everybody, I'm back. And it's a very, very white winter's day in Northern Idaho. I'm just west of Lake Coeur d'Alene, up a mountain alongside a little creek called Beauty Creek. And beauty it is. Let me tell you something. I've shot this creek twice before, once in the fall and once in the spring. And I've been dying for a winter's day so that I could shoot it in the winter. And so what I decided to do today was to make a lesson out of this as well as just one of my vlogs that I like to do. I'm going to go ahead and shoot it in uh, focus stacking or focus bracketing mode on the X-T3. In past times, I would only shoot it, I would have to shoot multiple images and reset the focus multiple times on my X-T20. And before that, on my Sony cameras, uh, there was no choice but to do it that way. I had to kind of pick where I wanted to shoot it along a, a spectrum of focal points. Now the Fuji will do it for us. So we'll see how it works today. And in the middle of this, I will cut back to me in the studio and I'll actually show you how I put the whole thing together. And then I'll come back out and finish out the vlog today. So let me hit the intro. Okay, after a little bit of a walk, hope you enjoyed the drone footage by the way, it was pretty sweet up there. That uh, DJI Mavic Zoom thing is money. I love how I can just place it and zoom the camera and not have to worry about flying it sometimes. Huge advantage. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. So now I'm going to go try to trek down here. I did notice that there's a tree branch that uh, wasn't there last time I shot, so I'm going to have to do something about this tree branch. For now, let's get down to the little creek and see if I can get an image. Okay, it was a little sketchy getting down. I actually tried to climb down over there and move this branch, but that branch is really thick. And I don't have something big enough to cut it down and I don't really want to cut it down. So what I'm going to have to do is get low enough here and shoot, try to shoot underneath it. But this is the spot, big rock there and you can still see the beautiful mossy green on the rocks mixed with the snow snow on the trees the problem is that i'm having right now is that the temperature has dropped from about 32 to about 39 pretty quickly here and so the snow on top of the trees is starting to melt so it's going to create some problems for me i'm sure i've leveled my tripod I'm going to go ahead, set the camera up, and then I'll get a closer shot so I can show you on screen exactly what I'm doing. My exposure is at two seconds, which looks perfect. It's what I really like, my exposure is on these, about two seconds. And 
I'm gonna make sure that I'm in my bracket mode. So I'm in my bracket mode here. And on my drive setting, I set a hot uh, function button to the very front of this. So just simple for me to remember. You can set them anywhere. I can show you later how to set those up. And it brings me right to my focus bracket setting. And in my focus bracket setting, all right, now I have it to set to five images because I'm at F11, which means my depth of field is probably between somewhere between three and five images. I'm not sure. Um, the camera will determine that. So if I set it to five and it determines that it needs three, that's what it's going to shoot. And my steps, I keep it about five. And maybe I'll actually change my steps this time to four and keep my interval here at uh, zero seconds. Okay, so now I'm gonna get out of that, make sure that my timer is set to two seconds, two second timer. And I'm gonna make sure my focus is locked on that rock right in front of me. And maybe I'll even come down, maybe I'll even move my focus to right there, right in front of me. Okay, let my camera do the work. Now it's gonna go through and it's choosing the focal points that it needs and we'll see how many images it actually shot that's at 302 301 300 that's 3 299 4 that was it you can see that was another shot so it shows out of the five images it determined that it needed four images to get the focus perfectly and I had done it both in manual focus mode and in autofocus mode with this and both seemed to work. Okay, see how easy that was? Amazing! I used to have to sit here and focus check and pick the different spots out of my composition to make sure the focus was right every single image and this thing actually determines how many images I can shoot. <coughs> if I tell it 10, it's gonna say oh no we only need to do three or four. It's amazing. So, I love that feature. So let's see how it looks when we get back into the office and let Photoshop do the magic and stack them and blend them for us. So let's go back to the office now. It's a beautiful, beautiful day out there, but it's a little wet as uh, my boots are feeling a little wet. Pants, a little wet, yeah, anyway. It's a lot warmer in here. And because I was uh, kind of freezing out there, I forgot to mention an important fact to you. Please set all of your settings on your camera to manual, all except for focus. I'll explain. Make sure your ISO is set to manual. Do not put it in auto ISO. Make sure you manually set your aperture. Make sure you manually set your shutter speed. Make sure you manually set your white balance because you don't want it changing those elements as it's taking photos. So make sure all of those things are in, in manual mode. And finally, your focus can be in either autofocus or manual. I tend to like the autofocus. It was a lot easier and it did a great job. So just set that to autofocus, pick your point and go. Okay, a couple of things um, with the camera here. I wanted to make sure, and I'm going to get a close in a zoom on this right now. So let me get that focused. Okay, hopefully you can see that. We've got the, I've got my dial set to bracket mode. Make sure that is where you have set your drive dial. All right, and then another thing I want to show you as I turn the camera around here is I set my custom function button for drive setting to the front. You don't have to do that. Set it where if you want. Um, that's up to you, okay? So I'm gonna just gonna show you real quickly how to go about setting it, in case you don't know. Um, hold down the display button until the custom function menu comes up. And then you go to wherever button you want, scroll through, and I've set mine to function button two. And you can see as you select it, then you can go through the menu and pick what you want. And I set mine to drive setting, okay? So let's get out of that. And then the other important part of that is if you go into the menu and let's back out, depending wherever you are, you go down here to the camera and then you go over to drive setting and make sure 
that it is typically it's defaulted when you you first get your camera it's on AE bracket mode okay so make sure you go in there and you change it to focus bracket mode and then what happens is every time now that you hit it automatically takes you into the focus bracket automatically as soon as you hit the drive setting button okay that's simple I hope you found that helpful if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comment section and I'll respond to them as soon as I can um, what I'd like to do now is get into the computer and take this focus bracketing that we did in the Fuji X-T3 and uh, do focus stacking mode in Lightroom and Photoshop. Let's go there. Now that we're in the computer here, I just wanted to show you a couple things before I show you exactly how to focus stack these. Um, first, we can kind of see here that if I'm going to set these images side by side make sure this is my reference which is my first image I took so on the reference image here we're focused here on the foreground so the foreground's nice and sharp and the background is a little bit out of focus as you can see and on the last shot you can see it's a lot more in focus so the computer Photoshop is going to do a fabulous job of blending all of those so let's select all four of these together right click edit in and open as layers in photoshop and as it's opening in photoshop just one quick note a uh, reason i do these in lightroom to begin with is for this reason that it opens it in photoshop as separate layers i don't have to open each individual image later copy it and paste it to a layer because the most important thing in order for this to work in photoshop is that all four images or five or six or ten images how many ever you have are as separate layers in Photoshop and that's what we have here and Lightroom does a great job of it's a seamless transition between the two so now that we're in Photoshop I'm going to make this real painless I'm going to select all four images click on edit and the first thing we do is auto align layers make sure it's on auto and click OK. It'll process. Um, what it's going to do is going to stack the images exactly on top of one another, making sure there was no movement in the tripod, um, which I know that there wasn't, but it's always a safe bet to align them regardless. OK, as you can see, they aligned perfectly. And then the next step is to go back up to the edit screen uh, menu, rather, and select auto blend layers. Now, if you're computer has this unchecked make sure it's vitally important that you check seamless tones and colors if you do not the parts where it blends inside the image here it will be you'll see it almost look like puzzle pieces so I've made that mistake once and as I was zooming in I realized what I had done make sure that this blends all of the colors and tones as wherever it is masking out um, from the different images there um, and it creates a seamless transition and I always check content aware fill even though there's nothing here that there's no missing pixels so it'll be fine all right all right so make sure it's on stack images and those two are checked and click OK and we're gonna let it do its work and what it's doing right now is it's applying layer masks to all four of those images and selecting out the most the sharpest areas and uh, hiding the blurry areas on each image and revealing the sharpest and it does a great job of it click that it's just telling me no pixels on the edge that's fine and here we have our merged layer and so and on our merge layer, we can see now that we have, as we zoom in, we have sharpness on the foreground and sharpness on the background. So it did a great job. We have seamless tones and colors in here, and it looks wonderful. At this point, what I always do is, since I opened them in Lightroom, I'm just going to close this off and click Save, and it will open up automatically back into Lightroom and we will have our blended image and from this point you can work on it wherever you want 
what I typically do at this point is open it up in Luminar and do my final edits and sharpening in Luminar. I hope you found that helpful and easy to follow as uh, it is a pretty painless and easy process, realistically speaking. So if you do have any questions, however, regarding the process or regarding the Fuji X-T3 or um, Fuji film, uh, Fuji cameras in general, uh, I'd be happy to answer those. Go ahead and leave those questions in the comment area and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so let me head out back to that cold, cold creek. Well, I hope you think that was as cool as I do because let me tell you, I used to struggle through that with having to pick focal points. And now that my camera does it in a matter of really a few button clicks and I know that it's getting it perfect each time, it's amazing. I always set my camera about five, five images, 10 images based upon my aperture. If it was at five, six, you know, I might set it, say, hey, 15 frames, and it might only take 10, but that's the beauty of this. It determines it, and it seems to get it right every time. It's amazing. Um, so right now, I've set my camera in a slightly different position in portrait mode to get a couple more images, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm gonna focus stack all of these and I'm going to head out of here. I'll make sure to put up the images, the final images, so that you can see them at the end of the video. Hope you had as much fun as I did. I hope you got something out of today. If you have any questions, make sure you go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the content, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button. Let's me know that I should do more of this. Uh, I will leave on the outro here, I'll leave the images, the final images for you to see and a couple of last parting drone shots. All right, have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one.